Well, according to uh, Lessing, these two things operate. I mean, writing and drawing operate. One is a, operates in time, one operates in space. And in comics and in movies and in theater, you go between the two. So if you make pure image making, I think the, the language part of it is very low. If you make comics, it's, as high, it's bigger than languages. Uh, so I see it as a, a, yeah, a continuum from the word to the symbol to a simple picture to Albrecht Dürer but then to space and how do you draw space and you should, I, I, don't, I don't like to uh, think it's, um, it's competing with language if you use language in it. I mean in, in Asian picture making it's you write and you draw all on the same piece of paper. So, um, so it can be an augmented form of language, or it can be less than language. I mean, it's up to the artist. I mean, I assume you, you look at the picture you made, your own pictures to begin with, you look at your own work. But I, I mean, I, I think these disciplines are still the structure of schools in America. We have an English department, and an art department. With new media, we have a media department where they make film. But comics are taught between the English department and the picture department. But do they learn how to read their own work? I hope so, otherwise it's like somebody writing a novel and never read it. I mean, of course you have to read it and know, think about what another person will make of this thing. And I think the first question I ask them is to ask themselves when they make a comic strip or a, a, a picture, why am I making this picture? Why am I showing this to you? You know, when a friend comes over to you and tells you a story, there should be some purpose behind it. And if they, sometimes people come over to you and tell you stories and you say, why are you telling me this? Why do I care about your mother? Why should I, why should I care? And that's a pretty important question to say, um, why should the listener have any interest in what I'm saying? Or can they live without this story? And uh, if you can answer that question and still tell the story, I think it must be a pretty uh, important story. I give them a, I have, you know, help them make a checklist of things to ask themselves so they have their own kind of argument with, them or with themselves. It's not with me because I, I, don't, I, I don't want them to make comics like my comics. I want them to make some other kind of thing. So they come up with their own solution, hopefully. So. Um, yeah, it's just to be a conscience. And, and like in a gymnasium, you need the person to say, well, get down on the floor now and start doing your exercise. You need um, somebody to just push you a little bit. But that's a minor part of it. I mean, anybody can push somebody. Is that the, the students make a lot of work and then look at it and come up with their own critique of their own work. Well, they look at all the students, look at each other's work. Yeah, it's a cross-section of the world, you know, in a class, 15, 20, 15 people. Yeah. It's not the whole world. But we, we, I always say, well, if two people in the class think this is a successful comic strip, that could, that might, you know, mean you have 2,000 readers in the world who would who would respond to that thing. I mean, it's just a cross-section. It's not everyone is going to, everybody 
is not making mass market comics. Uh, 